All right. Good afternoon, participants. Welcome to the third session of the eighth Digital Transformation Philippines. To deliver this keynote presentation is Nap Castillo of Fortinet, who has been in information security for over 20 years. And he is specializing in complex and high capacity cybersecurity architecture and design, virtualization, and enhanced technologies. So, Nap, the spotlight is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Naya. <clears throat> can you please confirm if you can hear me okay? Yes, can hear you okay. well and can see the presentation. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon, everyone, um, and uh, welcome to this uh, very important event. Uh, and thank you very much for uh, um, attending. Uh, for this, uh, for the next 20 uh, minutes or so, so uh, I will discuss about the uh, ways on how to secure digital opportunities during this uh, pandemic era. Uh, when uh, COVID-19 actually broke out late uh, 2019, majority of us actually moved online, you know, which uh, further accelerated the digital transformation efforts that has been underway for the uh, last uh, five or 10 years. You know. um, our kids began attending uh, classes remotely, Many employees started working uh, from home, and um, uh, numerous organizations actually transformed to digital business uh, to maintain the uh, operations as well as to preserve revenue uh, flows. No? Um, yeah, no, so let's get started. <clears throat> okay, no, so um, organizations are actually doing a huge leap. No? A, uh, lead driven by the uh, business needs during this uh, COVID era. No? Um, nowadays, we are uh, doing contactless payment. You know, we are into physical distancing, um, restricted movements, you know, which uh, resulted to um, everything online, like online shopping and uh, uh, distance learning. You know? And uh, most tasks, uh, like um, our day-to-day -day operation and monitoring of uh, facilities and infrastructures now are now being done remotely. Now, this is a leap to uh, digital transformation you know, that uh, almost ev <clears throat> every uh, sector of our economy is currently into. But uh, actually, even long before the uh, virus hit, we, all, we are already facing um, groundswell of uh, change in how we deliver application and um, data. Now, this is a change uh, driven further by this pandemic you know, and by the uh, need to move faster, you know, to be able to adapt more quickly and to be uh, more agile. You know? And some of the key initiatives you know, that uh, takes part on this uh, transformation is the move to the uh, cloud. You know? but, uh, as you may all know, securing the cloud isn't the same as the traditional on-premise uh, network security. Okay. Um, the, the this digital transformation actually resulted in uh, a big shift in terms of um, IT operation. Now, for one, uh, the traditional data centers that we used to uh, um, operate or maintain are now transforming into hybrid to um, achieve scalability and um, agility. No? We are now connecting our on-premise network as well as the uh, application infrastructure to multiple clouds no? uh, called hybrid data center. No? To, that is to gain speed, uh, efficiency in, in operation as well as to bring the service closer to our customers or to our users. No? While of course, maintaining the uh, consistent security posture. Okay. Um, collectively, we are um, uh, emerging from the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, which uh, obviously impacted our lives and our livelihoods. Okay. To support the uh, new non-touch uh, buying models, you know, the online shopping actually surged. You know, and um, it required the businesses to build capacity in their infrastructure. No? And the security has 
uh, to support this as well, no, to be able to cope up with the increasing consumer demand. No, the other aspects of the uh, pandemic was the uh, sudden shift to remote workforce, or also known as the hybrid workforce. No, uh, this hybrid workforce actually comprises of users and applications that can be anywhere. Now this um, um, causes challenge you know, to uh, support productivity and uh, we need to evaluate at how uh, to shift or to um, uh, emerge or how to change our uh, IT and security strategy to support this ongoing momentum on enabling work from anywhere. You know? And um, all these shifts no, uh, uh, requires automation no, for uh, agile provisioning as well as uh, decommissioning, if needed, of services to uh, maximize services as well as the uh, available resources. <clears throat> um, in terms of network security challenges, no, actually, according to uh, our own uh, threat landscape report uh, for this year, uh, this was actually done by our 40 guard uh, threat research team. Now, um, organizations worldwide actually saw um, seven times increase in uh, ransomware attacks no, over the uh, past 12 months. No? Uh, for example, no, the uh, one, the very uh, famous one, the Colonial Pipeline, no, which resulted in a temporary but um, severe dis disruption of uh, fuel supplies across the large portion of the United States. No? And actually, the Colonial Pipeline uh, paid over $4.4 million no, to Darkseid. No? Darkseid is the uh, Russian threat actor no, that is behind the attacks. No? Uh, and Colonial Pipeline need to pay to regain the control of its pipeline. And um, another uh, cyber attack that uh, uh, as devastating as this one is the one that happened e with uh, JBS. Now, JBS is one of the world's uh, largest meat processor. No, and um, um, it actually resulted to similar disruption, but this time to meat supplies demand, not to across the uh, United States. Now, and actually, JBS uh, paid higher, no? around eleven million dollars. To the cyber criminals to resolve the issue. Okay. Um, uh, Gartner actually reported that uh, blind spots due to use of uh, encryption such as TLS and SSL um, for data privacy and integrity you know, are actually becoming a liability in terms of um, uh, securing the data. Now, this is due to the fact that 54% uh, of uh, threats. Uh, were actually found uh, using encrypted flows. You know, they are the cyber criminals are actually leveraging on encryption as well, not to evade the um, security solution in place. Then uh, more than 50% of uh, organizations are still running their network uh, flatly. You know, they may they might be um, using segmentation based on uh, VLANs, you no, know, but uh, they really don't perform a uh, VLAN to VLAN uh, security insp inspection. No? Um, post COVID, though, we are actually expecting that um, still more than half of the workforce will still work uh, hybrid. Now, therefore, the excessive uh, trust or privileges given to users as well as on the devices you know, has to be addressed. You know, else, the uh, lateral movement of infection if uh, a system gets compromised, it will be widespread. And um, actually, according to Verizon's uh, breach investigation report, the information industry struggled the most when it comes to um, credential stealing botnets. No? Uh, this is due to the errors uh, that are common with misconfiguration, leading this kind of uh, vulnerability or uh, attacks. No? So the combined effect of uh, miscellaneous errors alongside with the uh, basic web application attacks and uh, system intrusion 
no actually accounted for uh, 83% of breaches no in this uh, vertical and uh, actually 70% of which were related no to stealing the personal credentials now no um cloud computing no, can actually be just as secure as uh, more traditional approaches no but it does uh, lead to um, new and expanded attack surfaces no? uh, that includes the uh, management APIs, the uh, cloud interconnection, the containers, as well as the uh, workload and orchestration systems. No? Uh, we need these uh, advanced systems, but uh, we also need to be aware that they do add uh, new opportunities Opportunities no, for misconfiguration, uh, for new uh, vulnerabilities, or uh, simply um, credential loss. Okay. The um, legacy security that we are uh, familiar with no, uh, are no longer able to cope due to the scalability and security requirement uh, appropriate no, to support these um, transformations. No? The point solution products you know, in uh, operating or running standalone you know, does not provide the holistic end-to-end -end security anymore. You know, that is to address the uh, current evolving threats. You know. And um, this actually widens the window of uh, exposure to attacks you know, if these attacks uh, aren't mitigated on time. You know. And the hybrid workforce uh brought about by this uh COVID situation so when i say hybrid workforce these are uh, the ones working from anywhere you know, actually requires um extending a uh, uniform security posture towards uh the remote uh workers devices so these are the devices that is beyond the control of the uh it of uh, each organization these are the devices that are owned by the user themselves no? and uh, we still see that ransomware is still among the top threats you know, uh, during the first half of uh, 2021 and it continuously uh, the number is still continuously uh, grows no? and uh, we uh, acknowledge the fact that uh, this possesses the um, serious security risk uh, on any organization Okay, so the digital transformation efforts like moving the workloads uh, into the cloud also can lead to uh, new or at least um, expanded uh, cyber attacks. No? And um, uh, these can be the threats no, that can uh, come from the bots as well as uh, attack frameworks, no? the multi-layered attacks. Uh, attack strategies uh, are carried out by cyber criminals and they feature attacks you know, that um, uh, is hidden in encrypted protocol or traffic you know, as well as encrypted data stores. And of course, the attempt you know, to exploit the seeming, seemingly endless stream of zero-day vulnerabilities. Okay. Okay. So um, more than the new opportunities to be uh, attacked, the um, hybrid cloud deployments actually uh, create new challenges in terms of uh, visibility uh, into who is doing what and into what uh, security is in place no? and how those security solutions are uh, were actually configured no? and even into uh, what the security events um, uh, have been uh, recorded or happened. No? Uh, meanwhile, the applications that uh, we already have no, were uh, likely deployed uh, not into a single cloud platform, but in multiple clouds. So it could be uh, deployed in your private cloud, in uh, uh, public cloud. No? There are several uh, vendors uh, offering a public cloud then uh, those applications that are running uh, as a service, you know, we will never know where our, this application are really hosted um, into. You know? And um, enforcing the 
uh, enforcing and document doc documenting these uh, uh, security policies and compliance no, is actually hard no, um, across the cloud. No? And of course, the vast amount of data that is being stored in and out of the cloud, no, the security of which is uh, uh, not always clear. No? Uh, please note that security in the cloud is a shared responsibility. No? The infrastructure needs to be secured by the provider themselves, no? while the contents or the information that is being uh, stored into the infrastructure no, is the responsibility of the cloud owner. Okay, and uh, when it comes to the supply chain ecosystem, you know, this is the um, ideal or dream ecosystem, a critical industry, not only limited to uh, manufacturing, but as well as to other uh, critical infrastructure, you know, like um, uh, utilities, um, healthcare, logistics, you no, know, uh, uh, and the, uh, this can be achieved, you no, know, when we uh, use digital innovation to enable and uh, uh, drive its business uh, to differentiate you know, uh, among our competition you know, if we are the ones um, uh, operating this ecosystem. You know, and uh, to be able to achieve that, you know, the, uh, we need to have a consistent security posture in between the different um, elements of this ecosystem. Yeah. And uh, the security posture should be uh, consistent across the entire ecosystem. You know? May it be going to the cloud, may it be going to the uh, uh, partners, you know? or into the um, uh, other infrastructure you know? where we utilize or where we uh, get the services from. Okay. So uh, how do we take this uh, highest uh, industry level of requirement in terms of security? Of course, we need to look at uh, uh, vendors you know, that have efficient supply uh, management you know, to meet the growing uh, requirements. You know, we need to be able to protect uh, by managing the security threats you know, to avoid uh, disruption and data breach. You know, we need to support the consolidation uh, to minimize footprints, you no know, carbon emission, as well as to um, eliminate complexity. You no, know? and uh, 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 the vendor you know, should be able to provide us the capability to work from anywhere, uh, of course, uh, securely. Okay, and uh, how do we do that? You know? There are many approaches in addressing these requirements. You no, know? and I will not go through all of them. You no, know? I will just name a few. You know? And uh, to start uh, with, you no, know, we need to deploy a next generation security, you know, a next generation security that can um, uh, provide the uh, necessary security to uh, protect our infrastructure as well as our application, regardless where these uh, systems or information is residing. You no, know, uh, we can use multiple technologies, combination of multiple technologies, you not know, like sandboxing. Um, uh, web uh, security, DNS security to uh, disrupt command and control. You know, we can use uh, network segmentation you know, to stop lateral movements. And we can also leverage on behavioral analytics you know, that leverages on artificial intelligence um, as well as uh, machine learning. Okay. Um, next is to consolidate. No? We can do consolidation by eliminating uh, point products. No? We need to evaluate our existing uh, security solution in place. No? If they are still uh, applicable to the business needs. No? Uh, then we need to run advanced uh, uh, security services. No? If we can uh, collapse all of this functionality into a platform, or into a device that can communicate um, within uh, security uh, uh, fabric or architecture, uh, the better. No? And the uh, deconsolidation uh, should also not be limited to uh, scaling. No? It should also support hyper uh, scalability. No? And uh, we also need to look into solution that uh, actually utilizes um, acceleration, no? may it be via hardware or may it be uh, via virtual uh, acceleration. 
Um, the users on one side no, can actually be working from anywhere. No? They can be from, uh, on their homes, uh, in the branches, no? in the coffee shops, um, or anywhere. No? And the application that they are accessing no, can be uh, uh, also residing anywhere. No? It could be on the premise data center. It could be in the public cloud, or as mentioned, it could be uh, a service no, that is being offered by a third party. No? And the zero trust network access will be critical no, to sit in the middle to enforce um, user identity as well as to check the device security posture. No? So that before it provides the access uh, to these applications from the user to the applications, no, it will be able to check for the user identity and the compliance of the devices no, to security policies. And uh, for each of the user to be uh, continuously monitored no, while accessing different um, uh, resources within the uh, network. Okay, no, so uh, we need to adapt um, a strong uh, security you know, that is driven by uh, networking. No? Uh, it should be able to deliver a woven uh, security across your uh, network infrastructure no? to protect the uh, users and data uh, at the net network edges. No? The security solution no? should also be able to provide high performance uh, uh, to cope with the ever-growing uh, business requirement. No? It must also be able to uh, deliver seamless uh, security by leveraging on artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning you know, to provide real-time uh, threat protection. You know? And um, another key uh, uh, characteristics that is that it should be able to uh, employ consistent security posture regardless of the location of the uh, users and the uh, uh, application. You know? Um, here are the uh, pillars no, that uh, you should uh, uh, consider no? uh, because the perimeter nowadays are everywhere. No? Since uh, we are adapting the cloud infrastructure, we are dealing with billions of um, connected devices no, that created new attack surfaces as well as uh, edges. Now we need to have the best protection. So, uh, first is the uh, security and network need to converge into the um, security-driven networking. Then we need to um, consider uh, zero trust no, to enable uh, our organization to see and control everybody and everything on the network, whether or, uh, on or off the network. No. Then, of course, the adaptive cloud security no, means that you secure any application on uh, any cloud, regardless of the uh, platform that we are using. Okay, so um, uh, the organizations now are encouraged to consider um, a security platform approach, no? uh, which contains or leverage on these uh, three key pillars that I have mentioned, the uh, security-driven networking, the zero trust access, and the adaptive cloud security. Now, and alongside, you now we need to have uh, the different components you know, that can support, uh, that can provide us uh, visibility on what is happening into the network, you know, the uh, real-time uh, threat intelligence you know, that uh, provides updates as well as uh, protection to the um, uh, network that is being uh, secured. And of course, the uh, integration to open ecosystems. So we need to support third-party integration uh, for us to have uh, investment protection as well. Okay. So to summarize my uh, uh, presentation, I want to leave you some key takeaways. Uh, first, we need to ensure that uh, we have a continuous innovation support and uh, uh, the vendor should be able to uh, provide uh, protection across the attack surfaces. Uh, by efficient supply management, now we need to make sure that um, there is an available uh, security solution or whatever the, uh, uh, we find that we need to secure something. 
Okay? Then we need to have a broad protection no, by leveraging on artificial intelligence and machine learning um, uh, by utilizing the fabric approach no, to provide us a wider visibility and broader protection. Then we need to consolidate no, to seamless integrate uh, multiple security solutions at the scale to optimize uh, total cost of ownership. Then, of course, uh, be able to deploy uh, consistent security and enjoy seamless uh, user experience no, for a secured work from uh, anywhere during and hopefully after this uh, uh, COVID period. Okay, so um, thank you for joining uh, this session. I think we still have some time for uh, Q&A. Um, Erica, Anel, back to you. Thank you, Nav, for the very wonderful presentation. So, yes, we still have seven minutes to be exact for questions. So I'd like to encourage our attendees in this presentation or session to key in your uh, questions via the chat tab on the right part of the platform. So uh, while we wait for those questions, Nav, I'd like to um, uh, ask one question. Uh, I have one here with me. So. What are the requirements to implement a zero trust network access infrastructure in a very heterogeneous computing environment that includes on-premise data center and cloud-based application, both privately and publicly host, hosted? Okay, thank you for that uh, uh, question, Neil. No, so um, zero trust uh, access no, is actually uh, an ecosystem. It's not a single uh, product uh, requirement. So we need to combine different um, uh, security solutions you know, to be able to achieve the zero trust access. Now, uh, for one, uh, at least we need to have something in place you know, to identify different devices, especially those uh, headless devices. You know, uh, like, for example, for critical infrastructure, uh, the IoT devices or uh, industrial IoT devices no, to, need to be identified. No? And uh, that can be done using uh, network access control. No? Uh, for uh, personal computers like uh, uh, the laptops and the mobile devices, no, we can uh, leverage on the advanced endpoint protection no? that can do... Um, um, and um, uh, EDR, no? Advanced, uh, Endpoint Detection and uh, Response. No? And uh, this can be coupled or complemented by the uh, network segmentation uh, functionality, no? which we can leverage the capability of our uh, next generation uh, firewall no? to provide segmentation regardless if the data center is on premise or in the cloud no? and uh, we need to leverage on the um, centralized management operation capability no? to, to, to deploy uh, uniform uh, security policies across these different um, network devices. Thank you, Nap, for um, answering that question. So uh, since we still have five uh, five minutes or four minutes, rather, um, maybe we wait for a few more minutes uh, for questions from our attendees. And um, actually, I have one more here because um, uh, you mentioned earlier something about critical infrastructure, right? So how, how would you say, can you or would you secure critical digital data? Uh, yes, no. Uh, so the the ones that I mentioned earlier, the attacks that I mentioned, the uh, colonial pipeline as well as the JBS, no, JBS uh, uh, mid processing um, uh, attack. No, actually they are from the uh, critical infrastructure uh, market segment. No? and since uh, critical infrastructure no are actually close closer to our life more than our um, um, information. No, it is uh, um, really uh, mandatory no, to consider uh, securing this uh, critical infrastructure. No? Actually, uh, uh, so, so, uh, in cyber, cyber security, no, we have this uh, thinking that the next world war no, will actually not buy weapons, 
no but um, attacking on this kind of uh, critical infrastructure no so imagine uh, bringing down the power plant no that provides power to homes during the uh, winter season no for countries that uh, have winter season no uh, it will uh, leave the people or the citizen of that country uh, in cold no that uh, can result to uh, loss of lives no that's why uh, uh, security for critical infrastructure is very important. Okay. Thank you. Now, I believe that's very, very well said. So there, we have one question from Kevin Geronimo. Uh, let me show that on stage so that it's, uh, you can see it um, bigger. So how do we protect ourselves from threats in encrypted transactions, knowing that it's already encrypted or secured? Okay, uh, that is a very good question. No, that's why uh, um, the encrypted uh, protocols or encrypted transactions no, need to be inspected as well. No, there are uh, uh, security uh, products no, like our Fortinet Next Generation Firewall, no, which can do deep SSL inspection. No, we can um, uh, uh, look into the encrypted uh, traffic. No, to make sure that it is clean from any uh, malicious uh, contents as well as um, uh, attacks that are driving these encrypted protocols. Now we uh, Fortinet, no, uh, since we uh, have the capability of accelerating this SSL inspection, now we can inspect the encrypted uh, traffic at a very high speed. No, it doesn't become the uh, bottleneck uh, for the network. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, Nap. And thank you as well to Kevin for um, proposing one question. Um, since we have a minute, maybe any any other last uh, message, maybe? Yeah, uh, I, I would like to invite you all you know, to uh, visit our group. No, I will be uh, staying there as well. No, uh, then we can uh, discuss uh, further. No? We will be happy to uh, discuss it no? as well as uh, provide you more information or we can schedule a meeting if needed. Uh, for Very more information, you need to visit our uh, um, Facebook page. No? We are on Instagram, Twitter, as well as uh, uh, on YouTube, no? please do visit our website at uh, www.fortinet.com. Thank, thank you, Nap. Uh, thank you as well to our attendees for being with us in this keynote presentation. And I hope that you were able to gather a lot of insight from Nap Castillo of Fortinet. So, um, for our next session, we will have a deep dive discussion. So that should be starting in a few minutes. So we'll see you there. Thank you once again, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, man. All right. Maybe I'll just open.